Hello and welcome, guys, to our first show of What the Fuck? And we have none other today than a 27-year-old DJ who decided to become a football coach and took India by storm. Yan Law, how are you, brother? I'm good, my brother. Thank you for having me here. And uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Well, it's, it's today is my pleasure talking to you, my friend. But listen, I want to cut to the chase. I'm going to give you the rules of this whole show about what the fuck, because we have rules here, believe it or not. Right? The only rule that we have is if you cannot, if you cannot sustain this 15-minute carnage and barrage from yours truly, please, please, please go to the corner like a little bitch and cry over there. All right? Done. Let's do this. That's the only rule. Everything else is game. Game on. Okay, so, Jan, brother, um, you, you, you are one of the youngest head coaches in, in the whole of India, and I dare say the whole of the world. All right? You're 27 years old. You have just completed your first I-League campaign with Punjab FC, formerly known as Minerva Punjab, under the tutelage of the ever-famous Ranjit Bajaj, who was already in this show, in the pre-pilot show. So just tell us, before we get into the nitty-gritty, mm -hmm. how, how would you describe in one word, one word, your season with Punjab? I'd say it was perfect. The word is just perfect. I think, uh, you know, we could have uh, won the title. We were in the title race for till about the, I think, 10th match at least. But unfortunately, things, you know, started taking a turn for the bad. But I'm pretty happy with the team's performance. A team which was just safe from relegation the previous year. And, you know, finishing where we did, I'm really proud of the team and everyone else around yeah, it would have been a shame if Punjab would have been relegated the, you know, the year before that, when Chennai City won the league. But um, you describe it as perfect. But what, what was the catalyst for that downturn of events? You know, you said after 10 or 11 games, things started going downhill. What the fuck happened, man? You know, our, I think... Uh... We played consistently for the first 10 games. We were on track. We were second on the table. Uh, we were the closest to Mohan Bagan. There was hardly a gap of uh, six points. And if when we played them, if we would have won, it would have been a gap of only three points then. But when we played them, we lost uh, to them narrowly. One nil from a throw-in. Can you believe it? We lost from a throw-in. And uh, the gap became nine points. And that was when... Uh, you know, things started getting difficult. The next game after that, we played against East Bengal in Calcutta itself. And that was another uh, difficult game for us where, you know, Chroma, the signing, uh, first signing in the transfer window, he scored, I think, probably one of the best goals probably Chroma will ever score from almost 40 yards out. And Limbu did not expect that. Nobody expected that in the stadium. I don't think Chroma expected that even. And... Uh, but luckily, Girik uh, equalized for us. But uh, a draw was not good enough uh, to take us as close as we would have liked to uh, Mohan Bagan. But the matches post that, I think, you know, when we saw that the gap is too much, a lot of players started losing their confidence. And uh, it, it was showing because they thought that Mohan Bagan was almost as good as champions that time. And it's close to impossible to catch up to them. So, the body language was dropping off a lot of players. Uh, some players were not getting game time, were feeling upset. And uh, the remainder of the matches when we played, we started drawing them. We played against Bukulam, we drew. We played against Indian Arrows and we drew a last minute uh, you know, game where we conceded a last minute penalty. So, I think the number of draws that we had was really uh, too much. And if we cut out all those last minute goals, probably we would have been. You know, title contender still the last. I think the I League wouldn't have been over yet. So you you know, Mohan Bagan were the winners at the end of the day. They uh they were a superb team. But you were talking about inconsistency, 
and um, you were also talking about, um, you know, about confidence. How much confidence do you have right now with all those, those trophies at the back there? I'm very confident, but uh, I want to have a real trophy, maybe the I League trophy, hopefully someday there for a couple of days. An I League medal, uh, ISL trophy, ISL medal, who knows, you know, and uh, that will be some a proud moment for me. So all these don't really matter compared to what I'm targeting in the future. And hopefully I can achieve these things in a couple of years. So I need okay. everyone's support and guidance for that. You know, Barcelona have a vacancy soon enough. Are you going to be applying for that job? <laughs> uh, not quite yet. I want to help Indian football grow, stay in India for you know as long as possible and contribute as much as possible to Indian football because, you know, I think that Indian coaches have quality, but we are not getting the opportunity. So, uh, you know, when a young Indian coach is proving a point to the country, I think that leaving the country would not be a right decision at the moment. Uh, proving myself even further would be taking it to the next level and give some Indian coaches also a little motivation that you know, Indians can do it. So that's why I want to be here. Indians can do it, but if you do go to Spain, Barcelona, you have to brush up on your Espanol, amigo. Ah, that's one thing you have to do. Yeah. Now listen, listen, listen. Bajaj, Ranjit Bajaj, yes? How is, keep it brief. All right. How is, if you can, of course, how is working with Ranjit Pajaj really like, man? See, I'll, I've worked in uh, so many clubs before, but uh, I've never met a man as passionate as him in my entire life. And uh, it's crazy. And it's crazy. Admit it. It's crazy. He's crazy about football. And, you know, I really respect that. Uh, for me, I'll say he's he's God. He gave me an opportunity. You know, I don't think any other owner, any other club, anywhere in the world would probably give a coach at the age of 25 years old the position of a head coach. You know, starting with the AFC Cup and then the I League. So, uh, you know, taking such a big gamble and that with the team the previous year was just safe from relegation. Uh, so, you know, it was taking a huge risk and I really... Uh, respect him for that he gave me this opportunity and uh, now i am wherever i am thanks to him but i think that uh, you know a lot of people say a lot of things about him but once you get to know him once you get to work with him i think people know how passionate and uh, what kind of a man he really is <coughs> if you say so brother if you say so now listen listen i heard a rumor that ranjit bajaj actually signed you because he heard that you were a good DJ and he needed the free free game music on. Is this true? That's absolutely bullshit, bro. <laughs> uh, I I you know I love DJing. Uh, I like to mix music since my high school days, and I bought that console uh, when I was in high school. And I used to play for a little bit of pocket money. You know, uh, dad would not want to spoil me. I used to spoil myself. And those days, uh, you know, players weren't paid so high as compared to what it is today. So anything to make a little bit of extra pocket money, extra few bucks. So I used to do that in one of my friends' uh, pubs. And, uh, you know, I took out my console after many years and uh, started DJing and people were shocked <laughs> because they didn't know I could do that. And probably if I, if they knew that, probably I would get more offers because I could be a DJ pre-match, post-match, in the bus, in the hotels, <laughs> after parties. Uh, so, yeah. You do look like a Backstreet Boys fan. I'll give you that. <laughs> now, listen up, brother. Listen up. So, your, 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 your career, not career, but your, your, your year with Punjab is over. Everything is fine. You're settling down to life in a, in, a, in, a, in a pandemic right now because that's what we're living in, right? COVID-19 apparently is everywhere. So... Mohammedan come knocking on your door. Knock, knock. Who's there? You know, Mohammedan. Mohammedan who? You know, so, so, how does that come about? And, you know, uh, uh, was it a difficult decision to take on Mohammedan Sporting Club and try to bring them back into the higher echelons of Indian football? 
See, I'll, I'll tell you one thing, Joel. The moment in sporting had given me the opportunity as well. You know, when I was when I just completed my uh, AFC B license, moment in sporting was the one to rope me in and uh, help me work with the youth as a head of youth development and gradually with the senior team. And that's when Mr. Bajaj spotted me when I passed the A license at the age of 25. You know, it was headlines literally everywhere that a 25 year old has got an AFC A license. So. uh i think we were playing in calcutta the i league second division and mr bajaj was there for the under 15 i league final round in calcutta itself all mm. the matches kalyani and uh, i had a two year contract with uh, mohammedan sporting and when mr ranjit bajaj gave me this offer i was only through about a year into my contract you know and i didn't know if mohammedan sporting would give me a noc or would like me to leave you know because uh, i think they were also very happy with my work but the club decided to let me go because they believe that it is good personal growth for me and this opportunity does not come every day starting with the afc and the head coach of an i league team you know and former i league champions so uh, you know i'm always grateful for mohammedan uh, to mohammedan sporting for whatever they've done for me and uh, you know when they came and started talking to me about uh, joining them again i thought that i would have loved to give back to the club because they stood by me when i needed it the most they gave me a platform they allowed me to join minerva and express myself in the big stage and um, you know things we've already everything is finalized i'm just waiting because we had a settlement uh, i had a two year deal with uh, punjab as everybody knows you know so i finished one season and now moving out so there was a settlement that we are just working on so i'm just waiting for the paperwork and then uh, you know i'm all set to join mohammedan sporting so you know it wasn't really a difficult decision saying yes to mohammedan sporting because that's these are one of the biggest clubs in the country you know i i don't know many clubs right now who are operating for more than 10 years and this club has been operating for over 100 you know so these are some of the clubs that uh, people really look up to and it's an honor because some of the legends of indian football have played for this club and coached in this club you know and when you talk about indian football it's east bengal mohan bagan mohan and sporting that comes to your mind uh, at first so me being from calcutta getting an opportunity to work in the big 3 we call it a big 3 in calcutta so you know there was not much uh, thought going into it and in such a pandemic being in calcutta working for mohammedan sporting and this is a brilliant chance for mohammedan sporting to get back to the i league and if i could do that for the club i think it would be a huge honor for me and trust me coaching mohammedan sporting even in the i league second division is probably bigger than coaching some of the teams in the i league at the moment you know because it's such a big and reputed club with so much of history such a huge fan base all over the country all over the world they have a huge fan base so you know this club is huge it's a huge responsibility and i would love to give them uh, the title and take them to the i league and get myself back into the i league as well with the team in the following uh, season so i'm really looking forward to this i heard that um, there's a rumor going around that um, there are more people in your presentation for mohammedan sporting club than there were atk fans last year in the whole isl games is this true <laughs> I can't comment on this Joel but uh, yeah Mohammedan sporting has tremendous fan base you know I'll tell you one thing East Bengal Mohan Bagan also have a huge fan base like everybody knows you know and that's in Calcutta because the main fans are in Calcutta they're from Bengal Mohammedan sporting being a community based club you know they have fans all over the country so when i was working with mohammedan sporting even when mohammedan sporting travels to some remote area to play some friendly match there's a packed stadium with mohammedan sporting supporters away match i'm talking about you know they have more supporters than the home team and that's the sort of weight this team has and you know there was not too much to think about when this offer came in so uh, i'm really privileged really honored and i would love to take this team back to the i league and you know what jan I firmly believe I really firmly believe that you are the man for the job. Thank you my brother. Listen up. Listen up. Um so 
that was 15 minutes, man. It's flown by like a, like a, like a, I don't know, like a hurricane, man. It was flown by so quickly. Seriously, brother. But listen, listen, listen. I didn't feel it was 15 minutes. Keep your feet on the ground, you know, and the sky's the limit, my friend. That is the most important thing. And uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Um, and 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 I really sincerely hope that next season, Mohammedan can be gracing the Hero I League once more. Absolutely. Anything you want to, anything you want to tell Mohammedan fans right now, personally, right now. Right now, main thing is that most of the games are going to happen in uh, closed doors, and we won't be having the fans backing us in our matches. So all I can say is to all the fans, please pray for us. Uh, support the team even in bad times like they've always done. And the good days are coming. So please be patient and uh, keep supporting the team like they've always been doing. They are brilliant fans. And uh, you know I'm really looking forward to helping the club get back to its former glory. Well, Jan, thank you very much. Don't forget to share this video once it goes up on YouTube which will be done, you know, at a later time. Share it. I want the Mohammedan fans to listen to you speaking passionately about the club. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed, you can take them back to the promised land of the Hero I League sooner rather than later. My friend, you are a fucking genius. Take care, brother. God bless you. I love you and hopefully we catch up soon because I don't like talking to you like this on... Uh, you know, through video. So, I miss you, bro. All the best. You did a fantastic job uh, with the commentary in the I-League this year. I was really happy. A new face, a new voice in Indian football. So, you know, I wish you all the best with that as well and keep doing what you're doing. You're one of the assets to us. So, just enjoy yourself and thanks for everything always. Take care, brother. God bless you, my friend. Good night, my brother.